Hey everybody and welcome to Adventures with Peps. We are on issue 66 of the Imperium magazine and look at this, I have a painted model. Right, we get inside, according to this cover, we get five new Space Marine models. We get the sniper that I'm painting, we get a, is it a suppressor, I want to say, and then I want to say infiltrators. I am not sure, to be honest. And then we have this Ultramarine Space Marine going up against a Chaos Cultist. Inside, yay, I got it right. We get a little page on suppressors, eliminators. We learn about the Second Tyrannic War, Chaos Knights, the Gardon and oh, Tor Gardon and Darth Lysander. Wow. Wow. I'm so bad at names. Then we get a how to build the Vanguard Space Marines and some 9th edition rules. So we get this lovely one page spread of the Suppressor Squad Jump Packed Equipped Fire Support. They come with jump packs, auto cannons, and the fancy Mark 10 armor. I'm going to be painting one of these in next week's issue. So keep your eyes open for that. We then get their little page of fluff that they always have for their battle records. We then also learn about the Eliminator Squad, who are basically the new and improved snipers. They come with their bolt sniper rifles, mag, noculars, infrared goggles, and camo cloaks. I had a lot of fun trying to work out how I was going to do my camo cloak, but we'll go over that later. Then you get your RPG rules like you always do. And then the bit that I'm actually enjoying about the magazine, I love any pages that have the red border on it. It is basically fluff and lore, so we're going to learn about the Second Tyrannic War, which following the defeat of the High Fleet Bearmoff, some foolish optimistic Imperial observers believed the ty Tyranid threat was over. Several centuries passed without incident before a second hive fleet reached into the Imperium and destroyed and devoured all in its path. Now this, I remember fondly from 2nd edition, there was this ginormous campaign that they held across the world where you could send in your battle reports and results and it affected the course of the campaign. As you can see, this was... Uh, Oh my god, what are they called? Scythes of the Emperor. That was their homeworld, I believe. And all the way up to here, they reached Macrag and I Core 4. There's a big campaign. Kalgar was killed by a bio mine, but his plot armor ultimately saved him, and they reckoned that part of the storyline. And here we go. They talk about it there. My personal craft world of the Eldari. The Iaden craft world, they took a beating at the hand of High Fleet Kraken. I just love this imagery. Think about this craft world, I really enjoy the yellow and the blue helmet. Mm, it's wonderful. Then we get a cool little two page bit about the Chaos Knights, the opposite of the Imperial Knights. Talk about the Chaos Held House Worlds and the Traitor Houses. You get things like Corvax. Hesperax, Chimere, Comentus, I guess that's how you say that one, Lucrus, and Vectrix. Then we learn a little bit about an Imperial Fist character, Darth Lysander, the Watch Commander of the Phalax. We also learn about Vortex Grenades, not how I imagined them looking in any way, shape, or form. If you were to ask me how to draw a Vortex Grenade, would not look like that. And then we have the captain of the third company, Tor Gadon, his hand of defiance, a relic power fist dating back to the Great Crusade. Look at that. He, he's badass. I think he's great. I really hope they do an updated model of him because his current one is looking old. This guy, I'm not sold on him. I like the idea of him. But I really, he looks like Hellboy. I forget the actor's name now. <laughs> I can't help but see that. Then we get a cool little Gene Steeler cult story. Look at that. I love Imperial Guard tanks. 
such fun to paint. I'll never collect an Imperial Guard army. Maybe a Chaos, a Gene Steeler Cult at some point. But yeah, beautiful artwork. Then get a couple of pages on how to build. Very simple building. I quite enjoyed it. And you end up with five models in total. Right now is probably a good time to do the painting guide. So I've got the model primed black and I've pulled out the lead belcher. It's been a while since I've painted an executioner. I've got to remember how I've been doing them. So at least he can blend into my army. And it's very simply a sweep in motion over anything that I want to have a slight shine. Oh my god, my camera unfocused on me. I hate when this happens. It will fix itself in a minute. But the idea is anything that I want to have a slight shine to it, I'm having this underneath it. Because when I put the contrast paint over, that lead belcher is going to show through still. Can't believe the camera has unfocused on me. So annoying. Let's see how long it takes me to realize that it's unfocused. Got to make sure he gets his boot, his backpack, the little side aspects, and obviously his face. Hey, right, there we go. I finally realized right at the end of doing it. Got the boot, backpack's done. Pretend that I was still painting this, even though I'd already done it. Get this bit of gun that I'd missed. Just take your time. Look at every aspect, make sure you've hit it all. You obviously can go back to fix any errors, but it's better to get it done now. Not too worried where I've hit the cloak, because I'm going to cover it in a nice solid colour in a minute. With the lead belcher successfully drying, we move on to the administratum grey. Now I'm going to do two coats of this because I watered down a little bit too much. It's gone on a little bit too thin. I'm just going to carefully go around. This is also the grey I use on the bases. My reasoning is the camo cloaks should match the surroundings. I think that makes sense to me. So the base coat is going to be this grey. I am going to do a few extra steps to the camo cloak just to make it look a little bit more exciting. But this is not going to be GW level camo, I warn you now. This is going to be tabletop, quick and dirty, welcome to adventures with peps where we love to do it dirty and quick. That sounded horrific. Maybe I'll cut that out. If you're hearing it still, I decided it was uh, stupid enough to stay in. But yeah, as you can see, I'm just slapping it on. This is going to take two coats, so you can join me in a minute. We then go to the tried and tested Leverdon Blue. I actually said it right that time. I think that's, this is going to be the first video where I didn't call it Leviathan. <laughs> but Leverdon Blue, this is my go-to colour. A lot of people have made comments, Execution is a silver with a slight tint of blue. I disagree, they're blue with a slight tint of silver or metal about them. Each their own. In my Badab books that I am using as a reference point, they look blue to me. I like them looking blue, so I have gone blue. You don't like it, don't copy it, do it your way. That's how this works here. I'm just here to get you to paint, not anything else. I'm not here to give you a masterclass, I'm not here to tell you I'm right, you're wrong. But in this occasion, I am right and you're wrong. They are blue in my mind, and they always will be. So, I'm getting this nice solid blue down. He's really fiddly. Now that I know how fiddly these guys are to paint, if I ever paint more of them, I'm going to leave the guns off and the cloak. I'm going to try and maybe even paint on the sprue. Especially the armour. Because, God, it was fiddly trying to get to his chest. It's behind his rifle. Very hard to get to. And then his face plate is also really hard to get to without making a mess. But luckily... It's just a grey base coat, so we can always fix up any errors I make. But yeah, just make sure you get a good solid coat on. Next up is the Rack of Flesh. I'm using this, as you can see, on his purity seal and the parchment. Picking out his eye lenses. And I am going to pick out his gun casing as well. There was a bit of me that wanted to use white, because I thought it would be a brighter, bolder statement colour. But I then kind of thought 
They're meant to be snipers. They're not going to be crazy bright or bold. Remember I just said that because I'm going to do something real stupid in a minute. But yeah, in my head, these are stealthy guys. They're not going to have bright white weaponry that's going to make any color on top of it really pop. So I went for this more earthy flesh tone instead. The guns on these snipers are so cool. The bolt rifles, there's something about them. They kind of make me think of a colonial marine gun. If you uh, changed up the, the gun barrel, but the actual body of the weapon looks like a pulse rifle. It's very cool design. I really like it. I'm very impressed with these models. I was looking at the website. Obviously, these are the uh, starter set version. But it's crazy to think three of these is $70. And then the suppressor squad comes in at $70. And then the 10-man infiltrator squad is like $90. You get all this over free magazines. So you're looking at around $45 in total. So they're pretty much half price. This Imperium magazine, love it or hate it, it was really good value for money. And I'm I'm happy I bought it. I'm very tempted by Combat Patrol when that comes out, but we'll have to see what the price tag looks on that one. I don't want to commit to it yet. And there was a little bit of me that was tempted by the Age of Sigma. But I just, fantasy, fantasy outside of Lord of the Rings doesn't really interest me. Uh, I love reading the Black Library books, but playing a game, that doesn't sit with me. I think if we were to do something more fantasy-esque, it would be probably, uh, what's the the jungle version of Frostgrave? I've forgotten what it's called. If you remember, drop me a comment below. It's like Ghost Archipelago or something, something like that. Anyway, I'm rabbiting on, so let's just skip forward a little bit and you can stop listening to me. Okay, time for the camo. This is interesting for definite. In my head, I don't know where I'd seen this pattern before. I'd seen it somewhere. But it's basically free swipes making kind of an arrowhead. As you can see, I'm just going whoop, whoop, whoop. I think it's like a reed pattern. I've seen it somewhere. Where? I can't tell you. But when I was looking at the cloak, I was like, I'm going to do this. So that's what I did. At the moment, it looks very bright and garish on the grey. Um, but I'm going to knock it all back with a nice wash later on. Which will bring it all down and make it make a lot more sense in the long run. This is a very long step, so rather than bore you with it, we are going to skip forward. You get the idea though. One, two, three. One, two. That went wrong. <laughs> Let's try it again. One, two, three. There you go. One, two, three. Very clumsy. I'm not worried about neatness here. But I think it works in the end. With the camo now complete and drying away nicely, we move on to the Griff Hound Orange. So for whatever reason, I have completely forgotten that these are meant to be stealthy snipers hiding in the bushes, killing HQ choices. And I've instead decided to grab a bright orange and color the gun casing in it. It makes no sense whatsoever from a military standpoint. But from crazy adventure with Pep sci-fi standpoint, this makes all the sense in the world. Why would it not be bright orange? I do love this paint. I love the way it goes on. I love the way it looks. So I'm very happy with the final result. But it just completely blows up my earlier phrase of being stealthy and sneaking around. Who sneaks around with a giant orange gun? I know that if my boss was like, hey, off you go. You're doing this today. <laughs> I would not be using this bright orange gun. But yeah, it just screams sci-fi to me, so I had to stick to it. With that complete, we grab the Tesseract Technical Paint. This is so bright, so garish. It's the best thing for lenses I can find. So I am going to put this on his sniper lens and onto his actual eyes socket. 
And I'm not being gentle, I'm just going to blob it on. Annoyingly, the camera loves my hand more than the model, so it keeps focusing on it. As you can see, that is a real pop of green. Even once it's dried, it still stands out. It is crazy good. I really like it. And we're pretty much getting through this now. There's only a couple of steps left. This was a joy to paint. I really enjoyed painting this model. Uh, if you've got any of these sitting around unpainted, give it a go. They're so fun. As you can see, I then grab the flesh tear. There's only one section for this, and that is the purity seal on his leg here. I'm trying to get the camera to focus. It's really fighting me today. I don't know why. Might have to move it closer to the painting table rather than trying to manually zoom in and hope the focus catches. Because as you can see, it's awkwardly halfway up to the camera. But that is it for the flesh tear red. Next step is going to be messing around with the gun a little bit. I wanted to break up that lead belcher color scheme that I've got going on. It's a... Uh, Though nice, and kind of the effect I want, it's very flat colour. So I wanted something that's going to just break it up a little. And with that in mind, I grab the Cryptek Armour Shade Gloss. Been sitting on this for a while, haven't used it for much. And I just pick out some key areas. So I picked out the magazine, the stock, the connecting point for the sniper sight to the main gun, and also the connecting point of the barrel to the gun, but I left the scope itself in lead belcher and the uh, the barrel nozzle, is that the correct term? I left that to be still the lead belcher colour scheme. I was thinking of doing some like heat damage to it, that kind of purplish blue effect you get, but I wasn't entirely sure how to do it, so I've just left it for now. Once I've worked out how to do that, I'll probably come back to this model and give it a go. And with that, we've only got one stage left. Can't believe it. This is gone real quick. And that final step is going to be Agrax Earthshade all over the camo cloak. I'm going to avoid the gun. I'm going to avoid the armor plates. And I'm just going to absolutely cover the camo cloak. I want to make sure it gets in all the recesses. The idea of that is to knock the the rack of flesh down and also knock the gray back because they're quite bright on this model uh, if i was doing maybe a blood angel army or imperial fists that gray wouldn't look so bright but because it's a dark blue army that gray is just way too bright so i'm going to use this to knock it down make it a bit more warm a bit more earthy and I guess we'll grab some glamour shots and then after that we'll get back to the magazine. So I hope you enjoyed. Hope I've inspired you to wax and paint down. Make sure you drop a like and thank you for watching through. I'm trying to get to that 4,000 hours of watch time. So every bit of you watching helps. Even if you just let this play and have it on moot, I don't care. Just uh, if you can help me get those watch hours, I would hugely appreciate it. So until I can catch you again soon, cheers for watching. We then get some Space Marine rules about combat doctrines, devastator, tactical assault. We then get a little tutorial on how it all works. And we get a little battle report to play through. So the Necrons are trying to exterminate the Vermin. And the Imperium are trying to destroy the Xenotech. For this battle report, you get 50 power to spend, which is a pretty decent size. And it's taken hold. You get points for objective markers. It's progressive. And you also get your secondary objectives as well. That's a fun little magazine this week. So in the next one, we are getting two pots of paint, White Scar and Tesseract. I've been using these already. So I've got nothing to show there, so I'm going to paint the Suppressor Space Marine for you instead. And after that, we are on to, I believe, the very last Wraith of the series. Can't believe it. We're on 67 next.
there's only 90 issues in total so we have broken the back of this 23 issues to go anyway hope you enjoyed and i'll catch you in the next video very soon boy boy